Hey everybody, it's Jay Young with the Customer to Raving Fan Podcast and Facebook Live. Today, I'm going to share with you a lesson I learned from twin three-year-old girls. When they say something, even though it sounds completely bizarre, trust them, right? <laughs> Case in point, uh, over the weekend, we had these uh, twin three-year-old girls as guests in our home. And it was a beautiful weekend. And the, uh, the little girls, they were in the kitchen having a snack. And they both shriek out, it's raining, it's raining. And I, I was in the other room on the computer. My wife said, oh, silly girls, it's not raining. It's a beautiful fall day. Because she was going to take the kids out and go play. And they said, no, it's raining. And then they pointed into the living room. And sure enough, water was pouring out of the ceiling actually coming out of one of the air conditioning vents in the ceiling. And last time I checked, water's not supposed to come from the air conditioning vent. So my wife freaks out. She's yelling, go turn off the water at the street. So I'm thinking in my head, okay, that's right. I, we have a tool for that. So I run to the garage and I find the tool hanging where it was supposed to be. Thankfully, it was there because we had just loaned that tool out and barely got it back probably a week ago. So there, there's that tool. I run out to the street, I get the water shut off, and I'm thinking the whole time, every second that I waste, another gallon of water is pouring out on our hardwood floors in the living room. So I got the water turned off, I get back into the house, my wife has all kinds of bath towels laid out on the floor, soaking up this water. There must have been a hundred gallons of water on the floor. I don't know how that much came out before these girls yelled, it's raining, it's raining. But th all that water all over the floor, where was it coming from? And we thought, well, if it's coming from the ceiling, then something's going on. Either we've got broken pipes or something's going on upstairs. So I run, I sprint up the stairs, skipped every other stair. Not bad for a 57-year-old guy, by the way. And I get to the, the bathroom in our master bedroom, and there's a lake in there. And <laughs> there's water everywhere. And I'm the last one that used that bathroom. So I, I'm feeling a little bit guilty here. But I will tell you this, the business that I did in there didn't require the use of toilet paper. So I'm thinking, all I did was flush down water, right? How did it become clogged? So we're down there. I, I, I've got every towel upstairs on the floor in the bathroom. She's got every towel downstairs on the floor in the living room. So once we have a lot of this water soaked up, I said, well, how in the world did that toilet overflow? And she goes, oh, oh, my wife tells me. Yeah, the, uh, the girls used that bathroom, and I forgot to mention, they found a roll of the toilet paper, a brand new roll of Charmin, and emptied it all out into the bowl and flushed it. And it flushed, I guess, partially down, and then when I went up, and flushed it again, that's when it said, I'm not going any further, and it just put all of the water back up all over the bathroom tile, thankfully tile. Some of it went into the uh, into our master bedroom where it was carpet, but not enough. So anyway, I'm thinking the whole time, I'm thinking, you know, if somebody had just followed up with these little girls as they were finishing their business up there because obviously if you're going to unroll an entire roll of toilet paper that's taking more time in the bathroom than should right so i got thinking about that i thought you know what that's a, there's a good lesson in there thankfully there's a good lesson in there because follow up is so important follow up in business is vitally important because the business is that follow up with their customers prevent 
all kinds of disasters, right? A business that follows up with their customers keeps that customer as a repeat customer so they're not going elsewhere the next time they need your solution because they already know you, like you, and trust you. That's what follow-up does. Follow-up helps to build that know, like, and trust quotient. Follow-up also means that that customer will now be a raving hot fan for life or at least they're on the road to being that. And that means they will tell all of their friends and family about you and the great solutions you provide. That's what great follow-up does. But when you don't follow up with customers, that's when problems arise. A customer might have a problem and they just get mad and they end up giving you a terrible review. Or when a friend asks them about, hey, do you know somebody who can do X, Y, Z? And they go, not those guys. See, that's what follow-up is all about. And that's what our customer reviver is all about. And if you'd like to learn more about Customer Reviver, simple enough, just go to CustomerReviver.com. Thanks so much for watching today. If you got something out of my disaster, I would love for you to share it, take a little screenshot of it, and tag me in it on your social media if you would. Again, CustomerReviver.com. And by the way, if you ever have three-year-old twin girls as guests, make sure you follow up with them after they use the, uh, the bathroom because disasters can happen. So thanks for watching, everybody.